Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Saturday, January 7th, and this is episode number 37. Welcome to the show. If you are a new viewer, thanks for stopping by and checking the show out. And if you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming back to see some more. I have a lot to talk about today. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this episode up into two parts just to save on the download time because we have two drawings today and I have a lot to talk about. So I didn't want that the episode to be something like an hour and a half. I don't know if it's going to be that long, but I just didn't want it to be that that long. So we're just going to go through what I've got and then I'm going to do the drawing afterwards. And again, I think I'm going to put it as a separate part to the like a part two or whatever. Anyway, it's been a busy week for me this week. Um, not so much work-wise or anything in particular other than the fact that it's the new year and Knittopia is about three, just over three months away. And although I have been working on Knittopia casually since last year's Knittopia, now is the time when I really get busy trying to get things together. Um, menus need to be planned and classes need to be determined. I need to make sure that everybody has all the information that they need before they get to the retreat. So it's a busy time for me, and the, the two weeks before Knittopia are, are even crazier. So I don't know how I'm going to get as much knitting done as I would like in the next three months, but hopefully if I don't get as much knitting done as I want in the next three months, the week and a half at Knittopia will make up for it. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Natopia at the end of this section of the podcast. I'm going to kind of show uh, the brochure from last year just to give everyone an idea. You know, if you're an indie dyer or if you're an indie crafter that has something to do with fiber or whatever, maybe you might be interested in making a donation. And I want to show the brochure so that everybody can get an idea of what is given to each participant when they um, arrive at Knittopia. But first, I'm going to go through my knitting. Like I said, I have a lot to talk about today. So I'm hoping that I'm not too long-winded for everybody. Okay, so finished objects. And I'm calling this a finished object, but technically it's not because the ends still need to be woven in. But I have cast off the sofa saver. This was supposed to be, I think it was five or six skeins of Karen's Simply Soft, I think it was. And I just, I, I guess I don't like that it's only this wide. This is how wide it is. And so, and it's not, it's obviously not that long, but I guess I didn't like the fact that it was only this wide. And you can see, I think you can see here, is where I changed the pattern. The original part down here was the um, how the pattern was originally written, and then I converted it to my bubble afghan. And to be completely honest, I like the bubble afghan stitch that I did um, on this better. Anyway, I cast it off because I didn't like the, the, the width of it. I think I'm going to continue doing something similar to this, um, but I'm going to make it more of a blanket type thing rather than just a strip. Anyway, here is my marker from, I don't know, however many weeks ago since I've worked on this project. So I did that much more. I finished off the second skein. So this is two skeins worth of yarn in this little bit of crochet. Um, and obviously it's for the cat's. I, to put over the sofa or whatever so that they can lay on it and snuggle with it and what have you. They love the other crocheted blankets that I've done. So, yeah. I like 
like it. I like the, the general idea of it. I just think I would have liked it better if it was a little bit bigger of a blanket so that I could also use it too. Which is what I like about the other blanket, the simple double crochet blanket that I did um, not too long ago. Because it's big enough where I can, if, if I'm laying on the couch and I get cold, I can throw it over me. Anyway, this is done. The ends do need to be woven in. And I can cross that one off the list. Like I said, I still have, I think I have four, three or four skeins of this left. And I think that I'm going to make some blankets. I don't know. I have to check. But I think the, um, the snuggle project that Sadie from Yarnivore and Diane from Knittables are working on I think you can do any blanket or whatever for the project. They do provide patterns, um, but I think you can just make it a specific size. They ask for specific sizes and then just give them that. And I really like the texture of this. It goes really quick. So I might make a couple of use this yarn for for something like that. The, the, the cool thing about it is, is this color is in my basement. You can see here these, the, 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 um, this bright turquoise and the purple are part of the colors in my basement. So I don't know, I might save this particular yarn to make another little small blanket for the basement here. But I have plenty of other yarn to make projects for Snuggle. So I am planning on doing that as well. I'm not going to really, um, promote it as far as I'm not going to participate in the podcaster, see how many people you can get to uh, participate. I encourage you to go over to Sadie's podcast, The Yarnivore, or Diane from The Knittables, and help them out and post your finished projects to one of their boards and get those blankets into your, um, a lot of, I think mostly the, like, um, animal shelters and whatnot. There's a list, and I'll link all of that in the show notes for you. But it's a great cause. Obviously, I love animals. Uh, we have five cats, so if I didn't love animals, I know I wouldn't have five cats. Anyway, so yeah, get over to, um, to Sadie's podcast and check out the, the, uh, the thread on her charity drive for the Snuggle Project. And let's make some blankets for the Snuggle Project so those poor animals can have a little bit of comfort. Um, yeah. So this one's done. I'm going to give this to the cats, and I'm sure they'll love it. That's the only finished object I have this week. Although, I have a hoe. I have a hoe. Which, if you don't watch... Um, Stockinette zombies. You need to do that because Amy and Megan are just hilarious. And a few episodes ago, Amy had a one sock completed, so they called it a hoe. I think so, I think it was one of their viewers said that. But anyway, I have a hoe. I have a finished mitten, finished stinky pink, and you can see here. Here's my marker. And I had that much left to go, and my thumb. So I don't know why I took so long to do this, but I did. I did tell you a few episodes ago that I ended up having to rip out the section. There's there's a whole other section that was supposed to go right in here that I think it was like 10, 10 rows or so, but I found that my... My row gauge was off, so I needed to take out some of those rows because this is right at my, my finger right here, which is the perfect fit, and this is at my thumb too, which I took out some section over here as well. But I ripped back about 10 rows and then just started the pink and started decreasing right away for that. And it worked out great. It fits perfectly. Again, the thumb I changed up a little bit. There was supposed to be another set of this a whole nother repeat starting from there up. There was supposed to be another repeat, but that would have made my, um, 
my thumb a little bit too big as well. So I cut that back and it fits absolutely perfectly. I love it. I can't wait to start the second pair or the second mitten. I had hoped to have the second mitten started by today, but that didn't happen. But I'm sure that it will be started by next week, I hope. But I'm very excited and I'm, I'm kind of even motivated to make myself a little, um, I don't really wear hats, so, but my ears get cold sometimes, so I think I'm going to make myself a little, um, like one of those headband things that go over your ears and keep your ears warm to match. I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to, how I'm going to do it or what I'm going to do. It's going to be color work and I might just maybe do something like the corrugated rib that's on the cuff here. I don't know. I have to see. I have to figure it all out. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. But that's that's my hoe of the week. Finished one mitten of stinky pink. Not a huge accomplishment because really, it was only 19 yards. And um, speaking of yardage. I'll be talking in the drawing section. I'll be talking about um, the knit your stash challenge from the fourth quarter. The drawing will be for that today, as well as the uh, thousand member drawing. And, um, but let me quickly tell you my yardage. I did finish the challenge with 649 yards knit. That's knit. That didn't include any of my D-stash or any of my charity knitting or any of my gift knitting, which really in the end, the last few pro the last few episodes, I didn't even count my gift knitting twice because that wasn't as big of a accomplishment for me. I just wanted to see how many yards I could knit. So I knitted a total of 6,499 yards from my stash. And... During that same time period, if you inclu also include my knitting for hire, I knit a total of 8,742 yards in three months. That's crazy. So, yeah, that was the fourth quarter challenge. We are starting the new um, challenge for, <clears throat> excuse me, the new challenge for January. And... There are already 23 people that have committed to, to um, knit through 2,000 yards of their stash for January. So I think that's totally awesome. So if you want to join into the challenge and try and work through some of your stash, get over to the, uh, the boards <clears throat> and sign yourself up. And let me tell you, last year... For all of 2011, I knit through 15 miles, 15, 15 and a third miles of yarn total. That's with all my projects, all my knitting for hire, everything that I did. 15 miles, just over 15 miles. And if you include my spinning yardage of my finished plied yarn, I, I knit, spun, crocheted six, almost 17 yards, 16.95 um, 16 miles. Miles! Almost 17 miles of yarn last year. That's amazing. I'm going to try and do that again this year. That was fun, though. <laughs> it's just amazing to look back over my projects and everything and be able to see that. And I found that out by keeping track of everything throughout the year on uh, knitmeter.com and I have those stats in my uh, profile page on Ravelry so that was kind of fun I'm gonna keep keep that up uh, this year and see if I can't beat that this year although that's a whole lot of knitting and I do have a life outside of knitting I know sometimes I wish I didn't but I do anyway moving right along let's look at Citron I did work on this a tiny, tiny bit. I think last week I said it was kind of on the back burner because uh, I really wanted to get Magrathea done. But um, there was a couple times that 
I needed something just completely mindless and I didn't feel like there was other things I guess I didn't feel like working on. So, um, so I did this. I did, I don't know, four or five rows. Not that many. There's the marker. So, about that much. Now, my yardage count for that is, it's, it's coming up as three and a half yards. I think it's more than that. I must have had a, um, a wrong number in my, my, uh, my weight last week or something. I'm not sure. Or maybe I forgot to weigh it. I don't remember. Anyway, a few rows. I am into section six. I am still planning on doing seven sections. But again, this project is kind of on the back burner because I'd like to get Stinky Pink and Magrathea done this month. And then I can pick this one back up again. But there that is. A few, few more yards or a few more um, rows done on that. I do really enjoy this project because it is so mindless. I just have to remember which rows I have to increase on and then go. I do have to figure out um, where I have to increase for sections six and seven because in the pattern only it goes up it only goes up to five sections, but you can kind of figure out what the next section is by looking back at the previous section. So I just have to write it out so that it makes it easier for when I get to the increase rows. And there's my ball. That's, this is the first ball. I do have one more ball of this. And this is um, the Malabrigo Baby, Baby Merino Lace. Malabrigo Baby Lace Merino, something like that. So that's that project. Uh, Magrathea. Here, um, Sammy is down here, and I'm wondering if she's going to get up here. Magrathea. I have made quite a bit of progress on this this week. As soon as I pull this out, she's probably going to get up here. I don't know what it is about this yarn. Here it is. In its lovely goodness, it's going to be quite large. I am on the lace section. Here is my marker from last week. And again, I'm on the lace section over here. I love this. I still am deeply in love with the yarn. I was not sure about how much yarn I was going to need. I really pushed it to the limit. Um, I think I had, when I was at section 23, I weighed my yarn. Repeat 23. I weighed my yarn, and I still had quite a bit. I think I had 50, 51 grams or something like that. No. I can't remember. Anyway, I had I still had quite a bit. Maybe it was 75 grams. Who knows? Anyway, I didn't keep good notes on that. All I know is that I still had quite a bit of yarn. And I thought I wanted to be able to do more repeats. So I did another repeat and I weighed it again. And I thought I had enough. I think I think then that was down to 46 grams. Yeah, I think it was 51 grams. And then I was down to 46 grams after another repeat. So I knew that I would have enough yarn to do my next repeat. Um, and so I, I did a total of 25 repeats and then started the lace border. Now I think I had 35 grams or thir I'm sorry, 39 grams left of my 155 grams gain of Volmise when I started the border. Still really nervous. I think, did I write down how much I have left? Um, I have 25 grams left right now. And I still have, I want to say, 17 rows of the second lace chart. I did put in a, a lifeline, and I don't think you'll be able to see it. You might be able to see where there's a marker right there. It's stuck in the lifeline. But um, I did put in a lifeline. At the, at the seventh row or the eighth row after my 24th repeat, just in case I had to rip it back. 
So, if I run out of yarn, I kind of have a, a safety line that I can rip back to and I don't have to worry too much about it and I don't have to worry about... Now, if I have, like, three stitches to cast off, I'll figure out how I'm going to get those three stitches cast off, but... We'll see how it goes. Everyone is kind of, I think everyone's kind of saying that when they're at that 25% mark and they start the border, um, they still end up with a little bit of yarn left. So I'm hoping that everything will be fine and it won't be an issue. So it's coming along. It will definitely be done this week. Whether it will be blocked by next week, I'm not sure, but it will definitely be done this week. So, yeah, this is just the, the second, the, this is the other lace, lace edging. This is the, the original side, the lace edging. I really kind of had a brain freeze on this when I went to start the edging. I'm looking at it. it, maybe it was because it was late at night, I'm not sure, but I was just looking at it and like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I was looking at it and I'm thinking, this is weird, this is weird. And I think because I had it wrapped around in my head that the one repeat section from the, um, no, I don't really know why I had such an issue. Anyway, it's coming right along. I don't know why I had such a brain freeze on it, but I did, but after I looked at it a few times and went back and put it away for a minute and came back to it, I figured it all out. So I am moving along with it. But like I said, it is going to be quite big. It's already, it's already past my wingspan and I'm not even stretching it out all the way. So I love this bull mice. Love it, love it, love it. And you know what? There's already seven people that have finished their, their shawls already that have posted their finished objects in the on the finished objects thread. So don't forget to post your finished objects. They have to be posted by the end of the month. The end of the month will designate the end of the knit along and we will be having our drawing at the end of the month for the knit along. And same thing with the color work mittens. The knit along runs until the end of the month. And you have to have two, two finished mittens. One is not going to cut it. You have to have two. And I will have two finished mittens, trust me. Maybe even three, if I can get my act together. So, that is Stinky Pink. I mean, Magrathea. This is Stinky Pink, that's Magrathea. And the last thing on my needles right now is, guess what, another dishcloth. I definitely am in love with these dishcloths. This is another one, and it's um, Sugars and Cream again, and it's in these pastel -y colors. It's just because this is the yarn that I have, and this is the yarn I'm going to use because, yes, the stash diet is in effect. Anything that you see that I show you as a stash enhancement on the show from this from this point on, hopefully, will be either um, something I previously ordered or a gift of sorts. Because I've already talked to my husband about these dishcloths, and I told him that he might just have to gift me some some yarn. <laughs> If I run out of this dishcloth cotton because I'm addicted to these little things. And I did find out this week from the all-knowing Kagi TM that mercerized cotton is not the best for dishcloths. Uh, Kagi TM does the high fiber diet. She does an audio podcast. If you are not listening to her podcast, you need to go and listen to it. Because she is so knowledgeable about so many things fiber that you will learn something on every single show. So she did tell me that mercerized cotton is not good for dishcloths. However, she said that they do make um, pretty uh, good face cloths. So I might try and make one with uh, make a face cloth out of some of that because I do have a lot of it. 
Maybe I'll try after I finish Bacardi if I have some left over. I'll give it a shot just to try what I have. But it's a half a cloth. Not too much progress. I did want to get another one on the needles. Um, I have a feeling that this will be a project that is kind of like a, another kind of travel project for me because um, it's easy. I don't have to think about it. I can toss it in my bag and go. No pattern required. And those are all my works in progress this week. I did do a total of 388 yards. Whoops. I did knit a total of 388 yards, or knit and crochet, if you want to include the um, crochet part of it. 388 yards this week. And I didn't calculate how much I needed to do to meet my 2,000 goal, 2,000 yard goal for the end of the month. But if it's anything like it was last time, it, um, it will be about 500 yards each week. So I need to get moving on that. So, so that's where the snuggle project and I might have to be needing some more slippers. Probably the snuggle project will be a huge helper in getting uh, that yardage. Okay, so let's move on to spinning. Spinning! I did work on the Yarn Hollow BFL and Tessa Silk. Not a huge amount. There it is. Last week I think my cop was a pretty much all oranges and yellows. So this week it is pinks and purples and a little bit of blue. I have been working on this a little bit. Not a huge amount, but definitely getting some spinning done on it. Not every day. I've been taking it work to work with me every day, but I don't always get time to work on it. And like I said, this week I've spent a lot of time working on Knittopia. So, it's coming along again. I'm hoping that I can get the rest of this spun up by the end of the month. But, who knows. I'm just, I'm working on it as I enjoy it. And when I get tired of it, I put it away. I am very excited about getting it spun up so that I can ply it. <coughs> and next up is the Polworth from... Blue Moon Fiber Arts, and there is the bobbin. This is the first third. Last week I showed you my card where I am keeping track of my singles, my two-ply, what it's going to look like if I do a two-ply, and what, I, what it would look like if I did a three-ply. I'm still going back and forth on whether I'm going to do a two-ply or a three-ply. I don't know yet. But I'm still absolutely loving the yarn or the fiber. Um, I did tell you last week that I ordered some more of it. It has not arrived yet. But I love it. I have about 12 grams, almost 13 grams left of the first third. So that's that. And this is the colorway Grinchy. And there's some, some green in there. It's going to be so fun to knit with, I think. It's, it's very fun to spin. So, it, that's coming right along. I am very addicted to that. Um, I have a hard time stopping it once I start it. <laughs> so I have to keep focused. Next up on my needles... I still haven't started the um, Evain. I think it's Evain. This is my Knit Girls Fiber. Um, I am still planning on starting this. If I can get Magrathea done this weekend, I'm probably going to wind this up and cast this on uh, for the coming week. Because I need to get that going. I think it'll be a quick project to do, uh, but it definitely has to be done by the end of February because that's when the Nilung is over. Um, so that project, I have another naughty hat 
coming up for um, the gal at the hardware store. I do need to get started on some knitting for hire. I need to choose which one I'm going to work on first. Um, so that's coming up. And this I didn't think was ever going to happen. But you may have noticed that <clears throat> most of the projects that I work on are practical projects. I am a practical knitter. Now, I will do other knitting for other people, and it'll be whatever they want. However, I'm a very practical person. And as much as I... <clears throat> excuse me. Something in my throat. As much as I love all of the monsters that everybody's been making, I just look at them and I think, what am I going to do with a monster? I mean, the monsters are pretty big. I mean, some of them are a good size. There is tons of stuff that I think are very cute. I've seen felted tea sets and all sorts of cute things. Crocheted food and all of that. Yes, it's adorable. It's very cute. I look at it and think, what am I going to do with it once I knit it or crochet it? I don't know. So I think, why do I, first, why waste my time doing it if I'm just going to have this thing sitting around not doing anything? But this week, I got crazy. And I ordered me some Amagurumi books. I got an email from, is it crochet? It's the Inner Weave Crochet. Crochet today? Cro I don't know. Whatever crochet it is. Inner Weave Crochet? Maybe it's Inner Weave Crochet. Um, for the Amagurumi, was it the Amagurumi calendar? I think. It must, I don't know what it was. Anyway, there was a really cute little thing that I saw that I thought was adorable. So I decided to go ahead and order it. I don't remember how much it was. So I ordered that. And then I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, these are really cute. And I'm thinking, what would I do with these little toys? Well, some of them are quite small. And I'm thinking, earlier this week, I was going through the cat toys. And if you know me or if you've ever been to a club at my house, you know that Mickey brings the toys to me. Now, Mickey carries around the little toys, but he also carries around larger toys, like this. I got this, I think, with a, um, with a game for my DS. It's a little pig. And he plays with it and he carries it around in his mouth but not only does he carry this around in his mouth but he carries this around in his mouth this thing is like seven or eight inches tall I mean it's as big as my head and this was another thing that I had gotten free I think it was from um, Big Fish Games it has a little stuffing issue it needs to be sewed <laughs> anyway he carries these around in his mouth. And I was going through the toys earlier this week and throwing out some of the toys that are a little bit more ratty. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to make him some little toys? And then I saw these books and I thought some of these things were really cute. Here's this one. This is um, Amagrumi Animal Friends by Michelle Wilcox. And this is the front cover. And the first thing that caught my eye was this little owl right here. Isn't he the most adorable thing you've ever seen? That caught my eye. And then, I, I, I think on Amazon you were able to look at some of the different projects. So, again, here's the owl. I'm trying to see if I can get it from being um, the light glare. And then there's this little kitty. I mean, these things are so cute. And most of these items in this book are about seven inches tall. Which, I mean, if he's carrying this thing around in his mouth, he can carry one of these things around in his mouth. There's a little squirrel. And 
a frog, a little chicken, and the cutest thing that I thought were all these different little accessories. The scarf with the owl. And here's a little t-shirt that you can make for the different animals. And a little skirt. A skirt and a hat. <laughs> so you could have, it could be like dress up. <laughs> Not that I would probably make the little things to go on for the cat, but because they'll just come off. But maybe my uh, niece and nephew would like one of these little toys. So that was cute. And these are all knitted, this one, in this book. Then I saw the Amagurumi Toy Box Cute Crocheted Friends. And this one, I'm not even sure how to pronounce her name, but that's, that's the author right there, I think. And again, this one has some cute things. And I just love it. The ducks, aren't they cute? This one is one of my favorites. Is the little, the little bunny with the little carrot. Is that not adorable? And the dog with the little bed. And these, I think, are a little bit smaller. Let me just look. Um, like, for instance, this one. This little polar bear. Oh, i got to show you the other page. Look at this. The polar bear and the baby ice fishing. <laughs> Is that not the cutest thing? Oh, my God. Um, and these are the, the mama polar bear is five and a half inches and the baby polar is polar bear is only three and a half inches. So that's the perfect size for a cat toy. And then of course, you have a little mouse, which all kitties need a mouse. Um, some sea creatures. And we're coming up on my next favorite one somewhere in here. There's all of them are very cute. Look at this. The koala bear and the baby. That's just the cutest thing too. I had to restrain myself from ordering like three more books, but and this one. Here is the best one. The little kitty in the bed. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And then you've got the frog with the lily pad. It's great. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And then here is another one of my favorites. Is the little teacup. With the little bit of um, marshmallow or whipped cream or whatever you want to call it in there. Adorable. Absolutely adorable. So... I am going to have some toys in my future for the little Mickey bear who likes to carry around stuff. So cute. A little crazy on my part, but it'll be fun. It'll be a stash buster. <laughs> the cat will love it. So that's going to be next on my list. Um... I think I already mentioned that there's 23 people signed up for the uh, the January Knit Your Stash Challenge. Thank you so much for joining. I think that's awesome. I mean, here we are, only on day seven of the of the month, and there's already 20 people signed. 23 people signed up. Um, I'm gonna quickly go through the stash enhancement that I received this week already. Still have a few more things coming. Um, I was asked on the boards if I did order some more Lorna's Laces Soulmate, and yes, I did. I went over to, um, Simply Sock Yarn and ordered these. So, I'll quickly show you these. This is, the first one is Watercolor. So, that's what that one looks like. And the second one is Seaside. So, I have a feeling that I'm going to be casting on for some Soulmate socks sometime in the very near future. 
And again, that's from Sim Simply Sock Yarn. This is the little card that she sent with a sample of some yarn. Oh, this is Malabrigo yarn that she sent. Oh. It tells you right on there, right on the card, what it is. Right there. And again, it's Simply Sock Yarn. And the other thing I got, which is what I forgot last week, I knew there was something that I was forgetting, is Highland Handmaids. I ordered some, I happened to watch her show. I was getting caught up on her show, and I happened to watch. And I've been trying to avoid this shop updates for, like, um, Fiber Nymph and Highland Handmaids because... I know I'm on this diet and I needed to quit. But this was actually ordered last year before the diet started. And this is her um, Silver Maple Sock Yarn. And the colorway is Classics. The uh, base is a 60% Superwash Merino, 30% Bamboo, and 10% Nylon. And isn't that gorgeous? It's, it's like a rosy pink and a... Um, a grayish green and some kind of natural kind of color. I love it. And there's her her card or the ball band. Love it. And she also sent me a little sachet of uh, lavender, which I've been putting these whenever I get these with my packages. I've been putting them on different shelves in my cabinets because lavender keeps away the bad little bugs that like to eat yarn. So those are stash enhancements for this week. I still have a few more coming. I still have my Miss Babs. I have my Blue Moon Fiber Arts. I have the Vulmise Lace that I got from D-Stash. Sundara Yarns. I think that's it. But no more buying. I might buy books. I might buy tools. But no more yarn. Not until the diet's over. The only thing I am really sad about is that I have not been able... I was not able to get Nancat on any of the updates. So that's one thing that I'm going to be sad about. But maybe... By the time my diet ends, the whole rush of everybody wanting it will be over, and I'll be able to get it easier. So that will be a good thing. I am enjoying the chatter on the boards. I love it that everyone's getting um, involved on the, uh, the Knitting Blooms Ravelry group. It's awesome. I love all the chatter back and forth and asking questions and participating in the challenges and the knit-alongs. Awesome. Love it, love it, love it. Keep it up, guys. I really enjoy um, hearing about what you're working on, seeing your projects in the, the project section, and even your stash enhancements. Keep showing me them because I'm making my list, checking it twice, because when my diet's over, I'm going to have a whole list of things that I'm going to want to order. And maybe I'll be able to get some of those things at uh, Rhinebeck. So, definitely keep those stash enhancements coming because I still need to know what I need to buy when the diet's over. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, I am going to quickly show you... Oh, first... Um, I have two pictures of some yarn that I'm going to be giving away, which I will do kind of like a random number. I'll put it up on, um, I'll put a thread up and you can put your name in if you want to have it. Um, and I am going to ask that you pay for shipping. I'm going to try and be able to ship it as cheap as possible, but it's pretty big. The first one is um, six skeins of fun fur which I actually purchased to make that um, huggable hedge cog or something like that and never did it. And then it's like, again, with the animals. Why am I going to make this if I can't do something with it? 
Um, and Mickey can't carry that thing around. That thing is, I think, this big. I don't think he's going to be able to carry that thing around. And it's, it's bulk, too. So, six skeins of fun fur, two skeins of the pom-pom yarn, which I love. I made a bunch of scarves with it last year. Actually, not last year, but the year before. Last year, meaning 2010. Um, but I have two skeins left over, and... I just can't, I can't bring myself to make another pom-pom scarf. I, I have one. I use it all the time. I have it with my coat. I love it. It's so nice and warm. I can't make it anymore. And then I have the leftover fever. And I will be showing you a picture of all of that. So if you want that one, um, post in the thread. Again, um, I'm going to do a random number if there's multiple people. If there's only one person that really wants it, then you it's yours. And we'll figure out what the shipping is. And the next one is um, four skeins of white blue, blue clay yarn and 18 skeins of CC. And I was going to show them here, but I didn't bring them over. It's over, over there. Um, I bought this yarn to make a sweater with the, with, it was going to be a white sweater with the pink trim and then like another little shell type thing with the pink. And I just don't see myself making it. I... The sweater that I wanted to make was actually made with collage yarn, and it was a beautiful sweater. And when I found out it was going to cost me $385 to make the sweater with the yarn that was used in the pattern, I decided I needed to find an alternative. Well, I found an alternative that I thought would work, and I thought that would be great. However, I just don't like the yarn. It's acrylic yarn... I don't, I found that I don't wear the sweaters that I've made with acrylic. Why, why make the sweater? I was going to keep the yarn and use it for the snuggle project, but I, for me, I just, I'm not, the boucle is really getting to me, so I tried to do a quick thing with it, and I wasn't happy with it, so I'm just going to give it away to somebody who is going to use it and love it, and maybe you'll make something with it um, for the snuggle project or for a granddaughter or something. I'm not sure. It's, it's cute yarn. It's great for kids. It's great for animals. It's not great for me. I love it. I love the colors, obviously. So those two things that I'm going to be giving away, and if you want them and are willing to pay for the shipping to get them to you, then uh, post in the thread and let me know, and we'll figure that out. Now, I want to kind of just go show you quickly the brochure. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I want to show you the brochure for the knitting retreat. This is something that I do every year. Um, I like to do the brochure because it provides uh, good information for being able to contact the people, the vendors who sponsored the retreat. So, here's the front cover. And you'll notice it says Knit Away, because that's the name that the retreat used to be. It's now called Knitopia. And so we're changing that. So that's the first thing. Then we have the itinerary. This was the first weekend, the itinerary. We kind of, on Saturday we like to have classes and stuff. So, um, so I did an itinerary. And then, oh, and this is the second week itinerary, but then we have, I have the full page, this, this page, and it's all of the sponsors. Every sponsor that sent something. So, it's a full page, and it has the name of the sponsor and their uh, website address. Quick, quick reference on this page. And then, I have, um which I think was the best thing that we could have done last year, was a little synopsis of, um, everybody gave me a little blurb about themselves. We have the pictures, um, email contacts, phone numbers, e uh, web or snail mail addresses. Because when you go to these retreats, you meet people. And then you become lifelong friends. So you like to be able to get in contact with people. So I have all that information in here. And people were making notes, you know, about, 
you know, oh, this was the person with that, or this is the person that did this, you know, so they would remember who they were. And the pictures were great because then you could put a face with a name. So we have multiple pages of um, participants. And we're going to do that again this year. In fact, that reminds me I have to get in contact with everybody and get that going. And then we start the advertisement pages. And these are the advertisements. And I do, again, the advertisements are based on um, the value of the, um, the donation that's sent. We prefer not to receive cash donations, only um, donations, product donations. So we have quite quite a number of of pages of advertisements, and that's the booklet. And then on the on the back, I keep notes of different things that we think about, maybe for next year or whatever. Um, in years past, we have included things like um, patterns. If somebody donates a pattern, or if there's a pattern for a specific make and take or what have you we've included that in the in the booklet um this year we got the idea from kagi from the knit, knitting in the mitten that we're thinking about doing a little section on lexington you know the different places that have wi-fi and the different shops in the area and what have you so there will be a new section on that this year um so yeah this takes a lot of time, let me tell you. <laughs> it takes a lot of time collecting all of the advertisements and all of that. So that is what I'm going to be doing for the coming weeks and the next three months trying to get ready for um, Knittopia. And I think that's all I have for this part of the show. Again, if you are watching here and you want to see the winners of the drawing for the uh, knit your stash challenge as well as the thousand member drawing please stop by and take a look for the um the next part of the show which will be probably 37.5 so that's all for now i hope your knitting blooms this week and i will talk to you next week oh wait speaking of next week i don't know what i'm going to do about next week I want to record, and I'm probably going to try and record Friday evening, but I'm going out of town. I am going to see my grandmother, um, who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, so I'm going to see her next weekend, and I'm only going to be in town for a couple of days, and most of my time is going to be spent with her, but I think I might have time for Friday evening or Saturday evening to record. If you don't see a show on Saturday, then you may not see it until Monday because I'm going to drive into town on Friday, hopefully get to see her Friday afternoon before evening, and then spend most of the day with her on Saturday and then drive home on Sunday. So... That's going to be a busy weekend. So hopefully I'll get to record. Hopefully um, you will see me next week. But if you don't, sorry about that. I need to go see my grandmother. And again, okay, now I'm done. <laughs> I didn't have that on my notes. That's why I almost forgot it. I will talk to you hopefully next week. And obviously I'll talk to you in a few minutes to do the prize drawing. So... Bye for now.